This, if you think this is a crap idea, I'm happy to stop and go with something else. So, but anyway, <laughs> that's just be- that's just become the bit of sound that goes at the start of the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? You go first. You go first. Me go first? Yeah. All right. My idea for a podcast is called the Automated Phone System Review Show. No. Where you go to like various automated phone systems for like banks and shops and all the different people in the world that have these systems now where it's recorded messages and press one and all that sort of stuff. And they have hold music and all that sort of stuff. And you each week review a different one and talk about how good a job you think they're doing. Like, this one's boring, this one's got good sound quality, this one has poor music choices. And you give them all, like, a mark out of ten and you discuss them in depth. And you could also branch out and make it for things like people's voicemail messages and stuff like that as, like, a little bonus section. Mm -hmm. Like, today we're going to ring someone up and say what we think about their voicemail message and that. But mainly it's about these automated... Because we all spend so much time (laughs) listening to these things. And also it's such an audio thing. It's such an audio format that I think it lends itself really well to a podcast. So Mm -hmm. that's my idea. Okay, I like this. So this this is... This is. It could be become a little bit obsessive. Hmm. It also could become. Oh, I'm I'm jumping ahead, but a, a way in which the industry starts to improve this area of its business. Oh, I think I, <laughs> I think I think I think we will be a catalyst for change. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is the idea. You play. You call up a company and hmm. you basically play. You listen and you engage your way and navigate your way through a few yeah. choices, and then you review. What were those choices like and their choice of music in particular? Well, yeah, if they use music. So it'd just be like, it'd be, an example would be, all right, everyone, we've had a lot of people in touch this week saying that they like or don't like the Commonwealth Bank automated phone system. Mm. They think it's confusing or they think the person whose voice it is is annoying or whatever. So we're going to give them a call today, 1-800-784-382. Let's see what we think of it. Yep. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, welcome to the Commonwealth Bank. We value your call and custom. If you'd like to inquire about your balance, press 1. If you'd like to ask about a home loan, press 2. And all that sort of stuff. And we'd go through all the menus and see where they lead and see how confusing it is. See how hard it is to get to a human. But also, you know, say, oh, yeah, I think yeah, I think she has a really nice voice, the woman doing it. Or, oh, he's really annoying. He sounds really condescending. And then once we finally get to that, okay, please wait while we put you through to her. And, you know, they play the whole music. We can say, oh, interesting choice in music. Okay, so what you're saying is you're actually, you're commentating on the experience as you're going. The whole, you have what, to be. we could, or we could have re- recorded segments. Like we, we did it earlier in the week. Mm-hmm. And we want to, because I think it could be a bit laborious listening to it. You know, you'd want to have a you bit. You can't of, listen to the whole thing. Yeah. yeah you'd, want some, you'd want some tight editing and some highlights i don't know exactly what the format would be but that would be the topic and it could then turn into people a a show about experiences with those systems and people call you or you tell your own stories or people will email and contact you on reddit and say oh i spent four and a half hours trying to get through to you Mm -hmm. know the john martin's customer service line and this is what happened to me so it would then become anecdotes and that but everyone seems to have an opinion on these things Mm. and i think they do incite they probably incite more negative feelings than positive feelings but they do certainly incite emotion and i think that's something we could tap into as well and it's just such an audio thing it's such a soundy thing so i think it's just begging for a podcast well firstly it excites 100 percent negative emotion (laughs) okay yeah (laughs) yeah No, I've never heard anyone compliment or be excited or call just just for the automated voice. But it is an interesting idea because it's one of those areas that's perfunctionary and could become entertaining and interesting. You know, once upon a time, websites websites were very plain, and then they become more colourful and more interesting. So it is something that you know what I mean. It could you could it be you could people companies could start buying the rights to really interesting songs and tunes of songs. They could have their own stations. And be playing different mixes of songs. You actually, you know what I mean? Like want to use it or if you, I don't know, somehow make this the experience more stimulating. You're really seeing this podcast as a catalyst for change, aren't you? You're, I, I, you're, <laughs> you're, you're seeing them. They're gonna, oh, suddenly companies are going to start whole radio stations just so they don't get a negative review from us. <laughs> I just think that it's something about an edge. I'm printing t-shirts. I'm starting an advocacy group. <laughs> I tell you what, I worked at a company, right, where where I was on, I was a phone operator. Uh, and when, when did you do this? <laughs> I worked at Optus, the telecommunications company, for a very brief period. Was I, where were you living? Were you in Adelaide? Or I was in, no, I was in Melbourne. Okay. I was finishing off some study and okay. then I did that full time for a few months before I got a job. Well, well, it was a job before I got another job in yeah. my vacation. But What was it like? 
It was really quite interesting for a while. It was quite fascinating because you got to learn all the computer systems and the people are good fun too. And I still have a good friend um, who I met at that stage. We, we keep in contact. So that was all interesting. The job does become uh, tiresome because you get the same stuff over again, but you're there to try and solve problems. And I love fixing problems. So people call up with a problem and you solve it for them. And there's a satisfaction in that that's happening every five minutes or so. But it's really funny how often, particularly elderly people, when they call up, make commentary on the automated system that's got them through to you. Yeah. And often I would hear the comment, as I was just telling the robot, <laughs> my phone's not working. <laughs> so, and they would refer to it as the robot, which was always very endearing. How do you feel about those things when you call up and you get the menus and the and the, the robot? Like, do you does it make you mad? Are you pretty, like, just the way of the world and you get on with it? Or I really, like, I really resent it and I will get to the human as fast as possible. Oh yeah, no, you need to do that. If I, this was a problem that I could that could be sorted out by these menus, I would have sorted it out myself on the computer. If it's got to a point where I'm phoning a business, I have a problem that needs dealing with that can't be sorted out by the normal methods. Yeah. Except yeah. then it's really embarrassing because sometimes you do get through to the person and they say, did you try this? And it's like, oh. <laughs> I feel like the automated system is merely a delaying tactic because there's a heavy call rate. So yeah. I'm only talking to this person. Like I need a person. Yeah. And they're um, making you walk through a maze before you get to the, get to the. That's treasure. right. It's the audio equivalent of you know when you go to the bank and there's like only one teller, but you have to snake your way through yeah. those little hmm. fences all the way through around to get there. It's like oh that gives us me another three minutes to get to the counter. <laughs> uh, I was going to say it's the audio equivalent of when you say to a kid, "You go and run to the end of the street and back, and I'll time you." Just so just so, just so you can have a li- just so you can have a little break from them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I value efficiency when I'm at work. And in this area, this is frustrating. So I'm always putting it on, you know, calling up, putting them on speakerphone and then getting, putting the volume down a little bit and getting on with other work. And then suddenly realizing I'm hearing someone go, hello, hello, hello. And going, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here I am. Here I am. And, uh, and then explaining the problem. It's worse. If you lose it, you're gone and you, ah, ah, no, oh, no, no. And I have to start all over again. There's nothing worse than getting ditched off one of those systems after 20 minutes. Of, everyone's got a story of like the yeah. time I spent four hours on a, on a phone thing and then got kicked off. The other thing that would be quite nice is because if you incorporated the human element of it, like when you finally do get to a human and you incorporate that in your podcast, it creates a lovely situation where when they finally answer the phone, before the conversation starts, you'll have to say to them, just so you know, this call will be recorded <laughs> for podcast purposes. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're recording you for quality control this time. That's right. Would you include the person, the human? So the human at the other end. Like, I have to say... There are no rules, man. I just came up with this idea okay. a few minutes ago. <laughs> would, <laughs> press one if you would include the human. <laughs> press two if you wouldn't include... Well, I have to say, even though the automated systems are there and they're prevalent and they're frustrating, the level of enthusiasm of humans on the other end has risen considerably recently. Mm. Like, I feel this person is... It's like a date. G'day! Can I call you Tim? I always feel like they're having a party as well. You hear all the people in the background like, oh, sorry, I was just having some beers. What's up? What can I help you with? I think they're having too much fun in those places. (laughs) They are. G'day, Tiger. I tell you, we did... At my workplace, we did do a little bit of... You know, you stand up and walk around because you've got the headset on and you, you know, throw a ball to someone over on the other side and all that because, you you know, you're just mm. trying to limber up and there is a little bit of that. The company tries to make it exciting, like with goal targets and celebrations and streamers and balloons and stuff, but no one's buying any of that. <laughs> well, they have streamers and balloons. Yeah, yeah. It's like exciting October month where we're, you know, it's just a, w- a typical workplace thing, trying to get us enthusiastic when, yeah. um, a, a, you know, about the workplace. But balloons Should I have done that here today, Tim? Should I have balloons up so you'd be <laughs> podcasting better? <laughs> that's, that's right. That's <laughs> It's like, woo, here we go. <laughs> this is exciting. God, Tim sounds bored today. Brady must have forgot the balloons. Oh, I tell you what I have done once. I've had a long, ongoing conversation with someone. I can't remember what company it was, but we did actually start talking about things. And I we had a conversation that went on for quite a while. <laughs> and the person was from England. They were a backpacker. And we chatted for a long time after the matter for which I'd called had happened. Mm. And mm. I'm sure... Either they're having the boring night or they're just, they've gone rogue. <laughs> they're not allowed to do that. Um, but most of the time, the over matiness is a little bit frustrating too. Like, yeah. you know, so you're having a busy day and I'm like, 
Yes, and I, I want to be relational. You want to be friendly. That, that's but- an Australian thing, though. They're so friendly in Australian customer service. I remember once getting off the plane, coming from England, arriving here in Adelaide and going into, like, a garage or something to buy petrol or food. And, like, how friendly the person was, like, scared me. Like, they were like, hey, how are you going? And I wasn't ready for the Australian friendliness. <laughs> and I was like, oh, go away, man. You're not, you're not supposed to talk to me. Just take my money and give me my food. Yeah. And then I went to a supermarket and it was Wednesday and I was buying the stuff at the checkout. And the girl at checkout says, so what are you doing on the weekend? I'm like, it's Wednesday. <laughs> like, just give me my food. Don't, don't, don't. I don't want to talk about my weekend. I want my food. Did you feel like you were being invited to make a commitment that was too, yeah, you know, too yeah. extravagant? Like- I'm just not, I'm just in England where customer service, they're so miserable. I just wasn't ready for like, you know, that level of, that level of friendliness. So. And then the person got down on their knee and produced a ring. <laughs> Would you like to spend forever with me? Is, I'm just buying is, some it is, it is a bit like that. I'm buying chewing gum and I feel like I have to say to the girl behind the counter, look, sorry, I'm already married. I'm already- <laughs> She 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 wants to be so friendly, yeah. Would you like to join our family for Christmas? (laughs) Okay, so this is an idea. Yeah, okay, so it it could be fun to make. And the commentating could... It could involve some pretty interesting common colloquialisms and fun names for things. So, you know what I mean? Like, how many steps are involved? Was it a three-stepper or a five-stepper? Yeah, you'd have all your terminologies. Yeah, oh, this was a five-stepper to get to the human. You could also start an international version. Like, you could start comparing what are the Australian automated phone services like compared to America and England. And you could get ones in other languages and things like that. You'd become like, it'd become this place Mm. where... I mean, I hope it would become a funny podcast and it, I don't want it to be too serious and try to like change the industry. The idea would be just to be taking the mickey a bit, but maybe, maybe it will end up serious and you'll become real, real connoisseurs and drivers of change in the industry. I don't know. I think the humour would be the powerful part about it. You could have special guests as well. Like today we've got, we've got Jeff Smith from Melbourne. This is a big one, people. He is actually the voice of you know, Telstra, yes. <laughs> and he could come on the show and you could, oh, what was it like voicing the system and stuff like that? And you could get, get people who design these systems, like the architects of them, who could tell you all the inside baseball, oh, when we're designing a system, this is what we do and we try to make, this is how we're working on the psychology and things like that. Mm. You, could, you mm. could get, you could be semi-serious about it, but at the same, I mean, the humour might be how serious you are about it. Like, Yeah, you know, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. You become real aficionados yeah. of the... <laughs> Which means the only downside is you would have to listen to a lot of automated messages to make it. Well, one a so week. Anyway. One a week. Well, but, I'm yeah. probably doing one a week. We're probably living one a week anyway. Yeah. Unless you, unless yeah, one of you becomes really obsessed with it. So one of you could be like, I could be like, just do one a week. And in the meantime, Tim's done like 40 midweek because he wants to really understand understand what it's what's going on but you know when you've got a podcast you're kind of thinking of ideas all the time so this would be one of those situations where you're calling up on a genuine problem and something quirky happened and you'd be like oh this is this is i should have been recording this hang on a sec <laughs> and you hang up go back to the start just to re- go through and record it again every time you've got to phone the bank to check something it's like oh i hate mixing my work and my and my <laughs> non-work but <laughs> That's yeah. right. All right. So we get you get so all right, you're going to go that one. We're we're giving that one a thumbs up for an idea. I think it's worth a pilot. It may not work, but I think it's worth a pilot idea to have a go. You know, someone should give it a try. The jury's out, but I think it's an interesting idea. I definitely think no one's ever thought of it before. So it gets full marks for originality. You say that, we'll get a message on Reddit saying, "Oh, there's already eight podcasts that do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all are. <laughs> what would you call it? I like the idea of that really boring name, the Automated Phone System <laughs> Review Podcast. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. Yeah. It's the. Oh, have you caught the latest edition of the automated phone system review podcast? (laughs) The what? (laughs) I like that idea of yeah, yeah. There's so many quirky names, and for companies now as well. And I like the the boring name. Yeah, Yeah, it just does what it says on the tin. Yeah, yeah. None of this, none of this fancy pants. Yeah, trendy buzzwords. That's cool. All right. Today we have a sponsor again, and again it is. Anchor.fm, a podcast in your pocket. That is what Anchor is to me. It's the it's an app that you put on like your phone, your iOS or Android, and then you can got you've got like a podcast making studio in your pocket. You can start your own station and it's so portable. So you can be out and about interviewing people, recording your thoughts as you have them, uploading them straight to your station, and of course you can listen to other people's podcasts and stations and things like that. This is an ingenious app. And I'm secretly hoping it's going to become massive, massive, massive successful because I think I will get really into it. Mm. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I've got a feeling. 
I quite like it. I quite like the app. We've had a play with it. You like the idea of this being a podcast facilitator, don't you? See, I'm, I'm more taken with the idea of, of a radio station in your pocket. Yeah, well, you're old school and you like your music. So you could start, you know, Tim FM. <laughs> Absolutely. introduce so because they have this integration with obviously with our with apple music and with spotify so you could just be talking about the music and then play and then actually having the songs play on your station mm-hmm. do you have a favorite like voice that you use for radio do you have a radio voice if you adopt one not really i've the only proper radio i've done at the bbc i was usually like being interviewed like as a correspondent so i'd be oh brady what's your story about what are you covering so i didn't really have a a presenter radio voice. Do yeah. you? Are you like? Have you got a DJ name? Like I don't have. <laughs> I don't have a. This DJ is Tim name. Tam Slam here at Tim FM. Coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. There's a whole range of um. Yeah, that lingo. It, there's a particular tone, isn't there? There's the deep talkback. Mm. You know, much older male interviewer mm. person with conservative opinions. And then there's the the FM. Yeah, coming at you. And they're always promising, you know, free tickets to see Pink and yeah, soft drink and we, hats. We've got the cash. <laughs> cash <laughs> cash <laughs> prizes. At the beach. But I think the thing I like about this Anchor app that I think people are really going to tap into, it's not just that it makes like making these stations and podcasts easy, which is really important, but... I think it's really going to tap into people's creativity. So if you've got a weird idea, mm. like we discussed on our own little anchor station the other day, if you wanted to make a podcast that you did set climbing trees, you could just climb a tree with your phone, get to the top of the tree, pull it out, make a podcast there. You could even edit it and upload it to the cloud, to your station, without even coming down from the tree. You could. Yeah. You get to play out some ideas, that's right. You get to have a go at it, and it makes the world of podcasting, which feels impenetrable to many people, accessible. Yes, this is true. This is true. We have a station for the Unmade podcast, anchor.fm slash unmade hyphen, like dash, overscore one, podcast. Anchor.fm slash unmade dash podcast. So if you want to go and listen to us do a few things on there, we do like bonus material. Mm. We have a like, we have an unmade podcast lightning round. And it's not even like... You know how there's albums and then there's B-sides? It's mm. not B-side material. It's like lost classic material. Lost classic? <laughs> it's more like it's more like unedited on the fly, less prepared to just to show you just to show people what we're like when, you know, in the raw. Yeah. <laughs> and that is as scary as it sounds. <laughs> that is as scary as it sounds. So go and check out uh, go and check out Anchor for yourself, anchor.fm. Yes. It's like a free app. It's it's really good. It's really easy to use. It's got all sorts of bells and whistles that we haven't even spoken about. Just have a look at it. Just have a look at it. It's free. And if you like it, cool. And if you don't like it, well, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Seriously, I can see you quite getting into this and having your own like little channel where you just pontificate about the world and like tell people <laughs> the way you think it is and talk about how great Nick Cave is and all that sort of stuff. And So you're thinking you picture me doing more of a an AM talk sort of thing, but about FM subjects. Is that what you... Yeah, like I imagine you'd get like a little bit over-intellectual and like, you know, quite liking the sound of your voice and thinking, hmm, I had, I had some interesting insights on that piece of music, didn't I? Would you... <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I can imagine you would be your most dedicated listener. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, um, I would tune in to me. I think this is a good idea, but it's a little bit of a, oh, yeah, no, that's a good idea sort of one. It's in the similar vein to your ology one. Yeah. And that is it's a podcast called Fear of Phobias. Right. And it's a podcast that goes through and explores different phobias and explains what they are. And you already know that there are a whole variety, hundreds of them. Mm. Some of them are quite quirky and interesting and intriguing and surprising. And it would be a a podcast at the very least that explained each one of them, went through them one at a time and explained them and gives a little bit of background around how that came to be. Is this just a hypothetical one or are there people who genuinely experience this phobia? Mm. Potentially could interview someone who genuinely has that phobia and a conversation could ensue about why how they came why they think they came to have that phobia was there some sort of childhood experience or was there a a tragedy or 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 they they don't know they've just always been well scared of heights you know is that but i'm with you yeah solid idea man solid it is solid it must it must already exist i did a quick search and i couldn't find it Mm. do you you suffer from a fear of suggesting podcast ideas that already exist (laughs) (laughs) i I do have that fear (laughs) 
But I yeah. normally I normally don't check because yeah. I don't want to lose a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> But I thought this one was was um, yeah. a bit obvious, and then I thought, well, your ology idea is it also one that I thought might exist, and and later know, later did. I did. <laughs> someone, someone launched idea. it. Someone launched it, but after we discussed it, yeah. okay. So this is a. I think you could spend a week on acoustophobia, which is a fear of noise, mm. and you could have a. We don't have a lot of listeners that suffer from that, I presume. Oh, presumably not. Allurophobia, which is a fear of cats. I think everyone, this is one of the ones that's interesting, which is an algophobia, which is a fear of pain. Who doesn't have a fear of pain? But I guess an irrational fear of pain. That's one of the... You I, know thought, I, mean? I thought that's what pain is. It's like, it's the thing to make you afraid of things that I... Hmm. It's a phobia phobia. I mean, I guess, I know there are some people who like pain, but that's the weird... Yeah, okay. Anyway, there might be a... The, the, the definition of a, an action film hero is someone who doesn't suffer from this. You know what I mean? Like Bruce Willis is willing to jump through a glass pane. You know what I mean? It's the definition of, oh, that didn't hurt. I was willing to do that. Yeah, okay. But the rest of us, to be quite honest, don't go looking for pain. No. There's amaxophobia, which is the fear of riding in a car. Oh, I, I, my uh, parents-in-law had a dog that had that. It cost, <laughs> it co- it cost me a holiday. <laughs> yeah. My my wife and I got in the car. We were like dog sitting for my parents in law. My wife and I also had a holiday. We were going up to the Lake District in England, and we got in the car with this dog. And we knew it didn't like cars, but we thought we can handle it. And I'm not joking. By the end of our street, we said, "Looks like I'm not going on the holiday." And I had to stay home with the dog. And my wife went on the holiday on her own with oh, with, with wow. some friends because like the dog just could not handle the car. Yeah. Wow. Maybe it wasn't the car. Maybe it was the idea of where you were going on a holiday. Yeah, it just didn't like the Lake District. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, that's rubbish. Hang on a second. We're traveling west. Hang on. <laughs> I'm not up for this. I don't mind the peaks, but I'm not going to the lakes. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole there's a whole range of these. Is there a fear of phobias? Is like, is there a pho- like? I, I really hope I don't have a phobia. I'm paranoid. I'm going to have one. I don't like, know. Like a phobia, phobia. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I can't find it on the list that I've got. Do you there suffer is- from any phobias? That's a good question. I, my initial answer is, no, oh, I don't have any phobias. Mm. But to be honest, I was looking up, a phobia is essentially, it's an intense, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, fear is perhaps not quite the right word. It's an intense aversion to something. Mm. So you doesn't have to be scared as in, oh, I'm going to run away from dogs. Mm. It could be, I don't like dogs. I just can't stand dogs, you know. So fear is, but mine is of the closest I come is ornithophobia, which is the- Birds? Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I- I'm not scared of birds, but I don't like birds. And I'm paranoid about magpies swooping. I have a friend that's got that. And he was swooped when he was a little kid. And his grandpa, like, started attacking the birds with a Swiss Army knife or something. Oh, really? Were you swooped as a kid? or I was swooped, but it wasn't so much the swooping. Because I often was swooped riding home from school. But you have a helmet on. So it'd be like, oh, it didn't hurt or anything. Hmm. But there was this one holiday when we were arriving somewhere. Mum and Dad, you know, the caravan. And there was a bird sitting on a little log and I went and sat next to it. Thought, oh, this is cute. It's really tame and gave it a little bit of food. And then it pecked my leg like it attacked me. It was a magpie. Oh, that was so painful because I was wearing shorts. And I always remember that moment, you know, and I think the fact that I remember that moment is something and I just don't like birds. And we've got a couple of chooks in the backyard and we've got really cute little fluffy chooks. That's chickens for people who aren't Australian. Oh, okay. (laughs) Hens. And um, But we used to have some larger hens, like big laying sort of ones. Mm. And I just don't like them. They come up to the window and tap on the window when I'm trying to eat eggs for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> While I eat their unborn children. <laughs> and I'm like, go away, go away. I don't, what do you do? They're just too big and dominant mm. and... Yeah, so I don't like... Their claws are awful. Talking about sitting on a log with a little bird and being pecked on the leg and then talking about how you find hens dominant, I don't think you've ever sounded less manly. <laughs> I do like chicken. <laughs> I love KFC. Yeah. But I, yeah, anyway, so that's the closest I come. I just don't, I don't like birds or enjoy yeah. birds. What about you? Do you know, whenever I'm asked that question, because people always, in England, everyone's scared of like spiders and snakes. And because we're from Australia, like spider, I'm quite, you know, like I don't like spiders and snakes. And if there's one on my leg, I, I would not be pleased about that. <laughs> But like I would, I don't have like a phobia of them. One thing I don't like and didn't like for a long time, and I always name this as my phobia. But I think I'm kind of over it, so I'm just sort of naming it for the sake of having a phobia. Mm. And that is mice, particularly dead mice. 
Wow. But mice in general. But I especially don't like a dead mouse. I think I must have been scarred by seeing a dead mouse in a mouse trap when I was young, when my you know dad was setting mouse traps or something in the house, and I, I he showed me one or something, and I was too young for it, and it scarred me a bit. I've always had a bit of a thing about dead mice. I was going to say if I think if there was a dead mouse in the house, I may even ask my wife to pick it up and get rid of it. But, wow. But I'd probably do it. Is So it's not a fear. Obviously, it's dead. So it's... You can be afraid of, you know... People, just, people who, there are people who are afraid of water, and water's dead, but they're still afraid of water. So I was always very scared of seeing a dead human body. Like I was, that was always something that was a fear for me. Yeah. Uh, so I is it that? That's perhaps because it was mysterious, unknown. Mm. You know. Mm. Yeah. Fear of being ridiculed. Well, doesn't catagolophobia? Fear of being ridiculed. No. Yeah, I guess no one really you likes You can't that. have that in Australia because everyone's paying each other out all the time. Yeah. So the podcast, I mean, there's a million different ways you could do this podcast, I yeah. guess. But it would be, you know, you could have guests, like you were saying, guests maybe would be the best way to go. I was at a party once and I met this girl who said she had this really irrational fear of fruit. Uh, <laughs> and I and I have heard of that before, but I didn't really believe it. And at one point I went into the kitchen and got a banana and sneaked up behind her and put the banana in front of her face <gasps> unexpectedly. And my goodness, that woman did have a fear of fruit. Wow. She screamed and leapt out of her chair and went running like you wouldn't believe. She was really... And another fear I've come across a few times now is a fear of buttons. And I'm, I know a woman that won't have buttons on her clothing because she... I don't know why, but she's just really afraid of buttons. Does, do you have any friends that have any unusual phobias? or? Uh, only the more typical ones. Like, I have several friends who have a fear of heights, which mm. is, I guess, the most common, perhaps the most understandable, or fear of flying, you know, those kinds of things which have yeah. the potential for danger attached to them. But it's, yeah, I tell you, it's it would be interesting. It would be interesting listening to people talk about, I guess, one of the more rare ones and explaining the lengths they go to in their life is to mm. to avoid it. Yeah. And, you know, and, and also the reasons as to how they think it came about. I think you're right. I think the best episodes would be the ones where there's a fear that is really unexpected and, and has modified people's life. I think another reason it would be a popular podcast is because people would like talking about their own fears. So you would get that interaction on something like a forum or a Reddit or Twitter and that where people feedback with the show, dying to tell you about their own fears, just like people love telling you about their own medical problems. I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And people, that's what's one thing. People don't seem to hide them. People do seem to be keen to say, look, I've got a fear of this. Like it's an interesting, mm. oh, it is interesting. But mm. people don't seem to be, have a fear of disclosure regarding their <laughs> No, no. If you, if you have an interesting phobia, go to the, the subreddit that we create for this episode and Tim and I would love to read about your phobias and pass judgment on them. We will not, we will not pass judgment on them. <laughs> well, I will pass judgment and, and Tim will be sympathetic. I'll tell you that. Oh, you shouldn't be afraid of that. You shouldn't be afraid of it, yeah. <laughs> Toughen the, up. The typical <laughs> typical old man advice. That's crazy. Just get over it. So cool. here we go. So fear of phobias is a cute name for it, but... I don't know if that's the best name for it because it's... It's like the opposite of the idea I just had, where like you don't, you're not actually saying what the podcast does on the tin. The podcast isn't about the fear of phobias at all. Like, no, no. I think you got a bit too clever for yourself there. All right, love of phobias. Pod phobia, podcaster phobia, just phobia, just phobia might work. Phobia, phobias. Hmm. How are you with snakes and spiders? Because they're the being Australians, they're the two we always get asked about. I've seen. I lived on um, sort of you know property on a farm a couple of times in my life, and the snakes is the one you really worry about. Hmm. Spiders, you can be careful of, and I have found in Australia we have very deadly spiders, and I've seen a redback spider. It's funny how you develop an intuition for them. So I was picking up a whole bunch of wood from my backyard and moving it somewhere else, and had been sitting there for a while whilst I was building something, and I got to the last piece, and then just something in me says look under this before you pick it up you know Spi- what I mean? spidey sense yeah it's like it was like a special <laughs> sense and i picked it up i was just i picked up all the others fine i picked it up and turned over and there was a red back spider they're always smaller than you think aren't they they are which kind of adds to their mystique in a way it's like mm. wow this is the deadliest and it's tiny as opposed to a massive what's it called a funnel funnel web the funnel webs are the, they're on the east coast of australia aren't they more are they more than here yeah i don't know if you get funnel webs here in south australia and, anyway, what, and what about snakes then you've had what are your snake interactions been like well snakes are scary because they're bigger and mm. they're silver in the sun you see them outside so they and they feel they seem more deadly and threatening because they're larger but i have i have come across a couple of snakes i've i've been walking across the property and sort of jumped down onto a path and then right funnily enough not in the grass but right in the middle of the path was a snake and it just scares the bejeebas out of you you just mm. stand back and it's there and it's mm. moving and it's 
Oh, and then you've got a, the worst thing is you can get away reasonably easy. You know, you don't try and engage it unless you really have to with a piece of wire or something. But mm. you don't, you stay well away. Yeah. And then you've got to walk the rest of the distance home where every single stick <laughs> is, a, is a snake. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, oh, it's like, you can, and you check your bed, you check under your bed the next morning. So you develop a bit of a snake phobia for the next few days after you've had something like that. Yeah. I'm disappointed by my lack of phobias. I need to work on it. I'm just too damn tough. You are, man. Mm. You're, you're a wild man. Mm. All right. Too well-rounded. Anyway, phobias. So phobias. All right. Good one. Good one. Good, good. Solid idea. Solid idea. Yeah. Yeah. What's a solid mark out of 10? Oh, no, that's like a, that's like only like a six. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because it's not like super original. No. But it is a good idea for a podcast. Like it, it's what I call a banker. It's a safety, it's a safe banker idea. Whereas my idea is a bit more like, could be genius, could be awful. <laughs> could be rubbish, yeah. <laughs> Probably <laughs> awful. Probably <laughs> awful. Fair enough. All right, let me do another one. Hi, everyone. We've got another sponsorship message here from Brilliant.org, which is this fantastic website service that you can go to to do all these little courses and quizzes and things to do with mathematics and science and things like astronomy and computer science. I think it's fantastic. You should check them out. They basically will help you understand the, the beauty, the hidden magic of these subjects that maybe you haven't seen before. And they do it through these brilliantly curated and designed quizzes and courses and things where you sort of go through step by step. Check them out. I am currently using it to try and convert my friend here, Tim, to the ways of probability and mathematics, which was something that he didn't fall in love with at school. Maybe it was because of our teachers, although... No offence, Mr. Potter. I think Mr. Potter was a great maths teacher. <laughs> but, 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 but I think Tim was just too hard a nut to crack. But, 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 but anyway, well, but maybe Brilliant.org is going to succeed where Mr. Potter failed. So you're not a particularly mathy, sciencey person. What do you think it would take to get you a little bit more engaged? Well, it's something like this that can walk me. Firstly, it can, it's interesting and it can walk me through. And pictures. Pictures help. Yeah, pictures. It's got to be, it's got to be visual. They do have pictures. Brilliant.org. Like, just go and have a look at it. Have a play. How to win. This is the thing. They've got See, the probability. How to win. How to win it. Look, t- I'm, I'm trying to do the ad here, and Tim is finding new things to play with. This is like Rain Man. Like, everyone's interested in the person who has the special knowledge, but really... The brother only gets interested when he can count cards. At <laughs> yeah, that's casino. right. So this has got a gaming strategies on how to use probability. So that's interesting. Oh, gambler's ga- fallacy. Gambler's fallacy is a good one. It's when a gambler believes that they're more likely to win than usual because they've been losing for so long that the win is due. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So I'd be interested to know how and why that, that works. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. So just because you're flipping... 10 coins in a row and five of them have come up heads doesn't mean the next one is more likely to be a tail just because yeah. the ones that have come beforehand have been heads. But this little course here on Brilliant will like talk you through it and help you understand why that's the case. Why that's the case. It's fascinating. Go to brilliant.org slash unmade. First 200 listeners who do it will get 20% off when they when they give this a go. And I think, well, it's probably going to be 199 listeners because I think Tim's going to sign up. I think I will. Look, there's a basic and an intermediate and an advanced. Yeah. So I think it's for everyone. I obviously will be starting on the basic. No, you're on intermediate. You shouldn't be on intermediate. You need to start on basic. I do. I do. Well, as I said, brilliant.org slash unmade. Use the slash unmade so they know you came from the unmade podcast. And well, I think I'm going to go and get a cup of tea because Tim's just playing now. All right, I've got an idea now. All right, hang on. You finished stretching? I have. I just saw your belly. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Flat, smooth. (laughs) 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 Not words that I would have used. We in Australia we call them a six pack. Not that I've got one, but we call it a six. Is that something that's called? Everyone calls that a six pack. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Your idea, man. All right. This is a bit out there. Okay, here we go. This is a slow burn idea. This podcast is called Let's Invent a Language. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, this is ambitious. All right. So basically from episode one, there's nothing. And the whole idea is that as the podcast progresses, we invent a whole new language that we gradually like come up with the words and the grammar and the rules. Just, just 
piece by piece, piece by piece, so that hopefully within like four or five hundred episodes, you would turn on the podcast and it would be completely in the new language that our listeners together have learned with us and that maybe helped help inform as a, as a community. So a bit like we, a bit like you have the invented language of it's Esperanto, isn't it? It's like an invented language mm. that was made up. This would be like our attempt at it, but it would be like you know you and me coming up with our language so, so from the start it would be all right so sometimes it could be like all right what's our word for a dog <laughs> and you come up with the coolest co- word for a dog you come up with a word but other times you'd have to you know hmm. so this would be a podcast better made by people with some linguistic expertise which oh w- well may- yes <laughs> but but in some ways maybe the fact we have none could be quite funny this but, is an amazing idea but i do like the, i do like the idea that at the end of like a few years people could turn on the podcast and it would be in a whole new language that at the start didn't exist yeah 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 this is <laughs> this is easily the most ambitious idea that we've had do you think yeah no. <laughs> I think you would literally have to i mean people do create languages right hmm. so for instance jr tolkien invented languages hmm. i mean he was he no it's not what's it called a ling i've forgotten it's not i'll have to think of the word in a minute he invented a whole language for the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And he for Elfin and all sorts of... And I'm not the Lord of the Rings aficionado, so I, I can't recall, but I'm I'm sure people will point it out later hmm. um, on the Reddit. So people do invent languages, and particularly for characters in different worlds. But this is really ambitious, because it would have to work. You would actually have to use it and on the podcast, and, and you'd have to be consistent. So you literally would have to be learning the language and genuinely putting it into practice all the time. Yeah. That's massively, massively ambitious. I like the idea as well that, like, over time, you'll start. Everyone will think you're an expert on it too, and we could start having people like correcting us. Like, so we <laughs> we would be speaking our new language, but some super fan who's been listening since episode one will be pointing out, actually, you've you've got that wrong. Like, this is the way it works, and and there could be like we could come up with a bit of the dictionary for it, and there could be like oh, a. Oh yes. Imagine that launching your own dictionary. Wow. What would we call the language? What names are going to have? Well, that's the, this is the fun. See, this is the fun thing. You start to play with the sounds of words, mm. and you can have all sorts of contrasting rules. Like, like for instance, the word for for dog might be something even shorter, like og. Mm. But then the word for cat could be insteparaneous. <laughs> so, <laughs> insteparaneous. Yeah. So it's all, yeah. <laughs> is that? I'm just sounding something out. But you know what I mean? An extraordinarily long word for something short and something short for for, for something that's long. Well, let's, so, let's, what's our word for dog going to be? I think it should be a woofer. A woofer. <laughs> Or is that cheating because we're using that kind of... <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a pigeon or a colloquialism. Right. So you've got to genuinely invent a... Do you know the word for dog in any other language? Do you know any other languages? No. I don't either. Yeah. I did one year of Italian in, and in, one year in of French. In French, it's uh, chien, isn't it? La chien is a dog. Okay. I think. I, I did, don't know. I did one year of French and one year of Italian because yeah. I swapped schools yeah. and then I didn't do any more. Yeah. So I know like hello and my name is in those languages. But it's funny, you can pick up, you go to France and you can, you, you, you do, you functionally are able yeah. to walk around. You start feeling quite sophisticated or by the wa- end of the week. Or you watch those Scandinavian noir dramas and think you can speak Danish by the <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But coming up with that's the challenge. Do you own the sounds and the way it's written and mm. the way it's written in the in different tenses, past tense, future tense, mm. all that sort of wow, stuff. Wow, we're already getting into tenses here. Oh yeah. The the problem with it as a podcast idea to actually treat it, treat it seriously as a podcast idea for a minute is that it would be a very hard podcast to get people to buy into yeah like the hosts would have to be really good mm. and really clever and either funny or smart in a way because it's like it's a big investment for someone to say all right i'm gonna stick with it. and it's also a podcast you couldn't really come into halfway through no very no. easily so getting people to sign on from the start would be difficult but i guess the hope would be you would do such a good job over the first 30 or 40 episodes that once you had your lucky break or word of mouth got out people would go back to the start and like and work their way through to catch up with you yeah it would be hard to make viable and successful even though it's quite a fun idea do you remember the girls at school used to pretend they had their own language well there was that double dutch thing wasn't it that was called double dutch and it was it all, i'd never completely understood how it worked but it involved taking i thought they were making it up no 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 it had a, there were rules to it so like tim would be like tivago Mivago or something you would like take the first sound and the second sound but you'd put these weird 
sounds in between mm. and all you had to do was filter out those sounds in between to understand it. I never understood it and couldn't speak it. But Well, I think that was the point. It was their girl language. Yeah. But, they, but they were only ever like, it was so impractical. You could only say three or four words. It was more just, you know, <laughs> it was probably just so the girls could just like, tell each other how handsome they thought we were Well, that's without, our, without us hearing. <laughs> they, were a bit, they were a bit embarrassed to say it to us. And that's, well, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd speak another language in the presence of two guys as good looking as us. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there are all sorts of problems with this, but it would be fun to attempt to do. It could it could be so you don't have to invent a language, you know, starting from basic punctuation and going from there and different letters. You could start introducing words that are reasonably common words and people would use that all week and then next week the the podcast. You know what I mean? So you start just adapting and swapping in words incidentally. So it mm. sort of grows that way. Because you have the language evolving, but also there's the spelling. Because you know how sometimes the written word has got different rules to the spoken word. So would we also be covering like, you know, this is a dog is called a woofer, but how is a woofer spelt? You know, is it W double o f a or f e r or yeah. f, you know, these are these are, you know. There are other languages which are coming about anyway. I mean, they, like well, firstly, there's text message language, but people use the different spellings of things, yeah. how they put them in text yeah. messages. I thought and we were more losing languages than gaining languages. I thought there was this whole homogenizing thing going on. I don't know if there are lots of new languages coming on straight. No, what I mean is new new uses for it that happen that way. The language but, evolves, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and France has this special ministry, which is about preserving their language. And this mm. is the only way something can be spoken. They're very mm. precious about it. Mm. But there's a... But we would be that for our new language. We, we, would, we would be we like would. The, the gods... Where if there was ever a debate, like only you or I could decide. Or which one of us? What if we disagreed? No, there would have to be a conference. I, I think we'd have to go with my decision seeing I came up with the idea. <laughs> I think I'm number one on this. I think you're my two right. OC. Like if I'm busy, <laughs> I can delegate to you the power to the power to decide words. But like There is the emojis are kind of like a new language as well. Maybe our new language could have its own emojis as well. So we'd have our own whole set of emojis. Yeah, that's true. Like we could just completely break off from the rest of the world. And imagine this, imagine our language becomes so popular and the podcast is so popular. Our language becomes like the official language of podcasting. And all and all podcasters podcasting in that language. Like it becomes like a or like a lingua franca. Like it becomes like the middle language that it's the language wow. you can guarantee that you know every podcast should at least have a a version in our language that's so it's the the podcast language a little bit like computers have code language like Mm. you had basic and then Mm. Mm. whatever came after basic for the other computer languages so like so then you could appeal to people all around the world so like because like people who don't speak english don't listen to the unmade podcast because it's in english but if we had like a a universal podcasting language it doesn't matter what country you're from well yeah but i listen to my podcast in brady language so i like (laughs) of course (laughs) brady language it's called brady language now (laughs) i've just i've just decided that then, then perhaps we could we could have our own country. Like we could, <laughs> by land, could have an army, <laughs> Brady land. And we, we could develop nuclear weapons. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Yes. Can you remember what the name is for a person who studies languages? Well, linguist. No linguist, but there's another one for people who I'm sure there's another word. There's came. an ography, isn't there? There's a. I know what you're talking about. I'll look up what Tolkien was on the old Google. The patron saint of nerds, philologist. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So that's about words, isn't it? Rather than language. It's the study of language in oral and written historical sources. Okay. So yeah. So Middle English and mm. the way in which it was used. I don't like the, the word philologist, so we'll come up with a new word for that in Brady language. <laughs> Well, that's it. You can break all the rules so you don't have to use the the root word of, you know, phobia, for instance. You can just change it to something else. Would you make it a more complex language or a simpler language than English? Incredibly complex. (laughs) You'd push it right out there. Yeah. Incredible number of exceptions to the rules. Little caveats, little full of little, little in jokes and side streets. And like you have to, if you haven't listened to every single episode you, of our podcast, you have no idea how to speak this bad boy. What if it was entirely circumstantial and subjective? In other words, that word means whatever you need it to be in that moment. So the language is always evolving in real time all the time, <laughs> which is another way of saying you talk gibberish and I'll talk gibberish. <laughs> And that's our language. There is there's also, I mean, German does something like this, where Germans often have one long word that captures essentially half a sentence in English. 
So we will yeah, have, you know, yeah. doctoral supervisor and they have doctor father and we have kindergarten, kindergarten, well, kindergarten, if we yeah, use that yeah. word, but, you know, they have a, lo- a word that's yeah. as long as a sentence yeah. to save us actually saying a sentence. Yeah. And they'll, they'll have a word, they'll have a word for that tingly feeling you get on your knee on a Wednesday when you bump it into a piece of metal while eating a hot dog. And they'll that's be like, right. oh yeah, Germans have got a word for that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's Schuschen Freud. That's it. It always sounds like an accusation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they do. And they've got two different words for history and yeah, you know, all those helpful and unhelpful things, as does, you know, Greek. I mean, the reason I'd be terrible for this podcast as well is I have no aptitude for languages. I was, it was always a big weakness of mine trying to learn a new language. Like I didn't do it much, but when I did, I didn't get anywhere. I, I think I haven't got, I haven't got the patience for it. I'm a bit the same. I had to do a, some study in Greek, in ancient Greek, and it is helpful. The bits you learn stay with you and they do help you with the text. But n- n- that's not motivating enough to go back and say, oh, I'm going to do three or four semesters of that. Mm. Mainly because there are other areas that I was, was more interested in studying. But it is difficult. It is difficult. And a lot of it's rote memory. Yeah. And you associate rote memory with childhood education. <laughs> not, you know, your, your memory just seems to diminish the older I get. But that's an excuse. I totally wish I spoke lots of languages, though, because I would so love to, like, be in those situations, like, at a dinner table or in lifts and that, when people <laughs> speak another language and they think you don't know what's going on and just, like, poker face it and just, like, pretend I have no idea what's going on but just know everything. Like, and then pick those magic moments when you reveal that you speak the language in some clever way. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's that you'd love to be that person with the menu at the restaurant and be able to order in the language, which is the most pretentious thing you could ever do in a film scene (laughs) yeah of all the podcast ideas we've discussed so far though this is the one that i am most definitely not gonna do (laughs) (laughs) this is gonna be the most unmade of the unmades but it is in a similar vein to tommy ball and tommy ball is the one that people seem to have found a real energy and excitement around a huge response to it because it's creating something out of nothing oh i think people listening will probably think oh that sounds in that sounds interesting i'd like to hear what that sounds like i'm just saying i can't do it i won't do it (laughs) tommy ball i could do you know and and we'll do one sometime we'll do one soon probably but like the 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 language one no no i can't do that well there we go yeah it's hugely ambitious let's invent a language Let's invent a language is the perfect name for it too. You had yeah. me at let's, let's invent a language. I should have just said that and stopped. It would have saved loads of time. This podcast is called Steve Martin's Sequels. <laughs> and, and it comes from, this is Steve Martin, the actor. Mm. I was watching last night one of the all-time great films, Planes, Trains and Automobiles. Yeah, very good film. I was watching it with um, my wife, and one of the wonderful things about my wife is she has n- very poor memory for films. So I, if I want to watch an awesome film that we've seen a hundred times, I just put it on, and she's like, this is great. I haven't seen it. Like, All right. She hasn't seen it before. Okay. So we watched it again, and I enjoy it, and I watch that probably once a year. It's such a great film. All right. But it got me thinking about Steve Martin and what a curious career he's had. Mm. This this podcast is not about him exclusively, right. but it got me thinking about he's an actor who's made some really great films and some really awful films. But one of the frustrating things is he has only ever made sequels for his awful films. <laughs> right. So he's so he he does films like Cheaper by the Dozen, you know, where it's just like a a, a, a really awful film. But then there's Cheaper by the Dozen two. Okay. And then there's you know what I mean. So whereas. Awesome films like Planes, Trains and Automobiles it just stands alone and he doesn't do a sequel. So I was just thinking about sequels in particular mm. and the value of them and if they're better than the originals. And there's a whole podcast we made around sequels. And the cute name I've given is Steve Martin sequels because he's making sequels that shouldn't be made, but he's not making the sequels that should be made. And okay. I think that there's a podcast idea to, to talk about sequels. I think people like talking about the value of sequels as well. I agree. I think I think sequels is a good idea. I think the name is too much of a red herring. Yeah. I see what you were trying to do to give it that kind of that kind of quirkiness, but I don't think it's a strong enough example to justify that being the name of the podcast. I think maybe just sequels. Just sequels. Yeah, or part or you know, or part two or something. But like I I love the idea of something where you just discuss sequels because you're right, it's such a when you're having pop culture film discussions, like everyone loves talking about is the sequel better than the original? They shouldn't have made a sequel, should they make a sequel? So I like the idea, but I'm but the name is too distracting and too obscure and a bit too clever. So what okay, so a couple of things. 
is there someone that you associate with sequels? Is there anyone who does the more sequels or, or is the sequel actor? You know what I mean? No, I guess, I guess, I don't think you need to attach it to someone. I just think sequels is enough. Okay, okay. Yeah. So so the the sequel strikes back or something. <laughs> it's a little bit <laughs> but I mean, that's, yeah, that's, the, I mean, the two, there are two or three things that you automatically think of. You think of The Empire Strikes Back as every, as the sequel everyone thinks part two is better than the, the one that came before. Mm. Uh, and The Godfather films. The Godfather, yeah. Um, Which won Best Picture, just like the original. Yeah. I looked up someone, I, I was curious, and so I looked up who's done the most sequels. And it's surprising because it's, uh, the information that I found online was Harrison Ford hmm. because of the trilogies that he's done. Hmm. And so you've got the, the obviously the Indiana Jones trilogy and you've got the Star Wars trilogy. So you've hmm. got, got two sequels, you know, hmm. that packed in. But then he's also did the sequel to the um, to the Jack Ryan trilogy. Yeah, Tom Clancy novels, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Although he didn't do all three, of course. Alec Baldwin did the hmm. first one. Hmm. But he did only the, he did the sequel. Yeah. And then he did the sequel to the sequel. Yeah. I wonder if that's the only example of someone doing only appearing in the sequels to a film and never in the first one as the main character. Ah, oh, there must be other examples. Um, but that's, it might be remakes, whereas this is a... They're no, kind of- well, Robert De Niro is not in the first Godfather film and he, did he get the Oscar for the second one? He oh, was, he's, he's strong in the second one. He is, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I don't think there's a... So that's, that's moving, that's, yeah, the timeline moves around and so there's a new, new actor playing. Uh, there, are lo- there, are, there are lots of examples of, I think, films, film si- series where an actor has died and someone else has, I mean, the Harry Potter, they changed Dumbledore, didn't they? After yeah. R- Richard Harris died, so... And- Michael Gambon or whatever um, took over. So, and the unique example is the um, the Bond franchise, which is a yeah. little bit different. They're not quite sequels, but they're yeah, they're, they're a series in a particular way. No, I do I do like the idea of uh, a sequels series. I mean, I can imagine it getting a little bit like, oh, this wasn't as good, or this is better. Like, I, I imagine the it could be. It could get tired after a while. You could be giving yourself a straight jacket that you might get sick of wearing as a podcaster after six months or a year. There might you might feel like there are other things you want to talk about, <laughs> and you wish you hadn't made your series all about sequels. I think like whenever I'm coming up with new YouTube channels, or people are talking to me about YouTube channels, and they're saying what should it be about and what should I call it, is I always tell them make sure you leave yourself wiggle room because yeah. you because you don't know where you're going to want to take this in six months' time, and you have given yourself quite a straight jacket, but you've also given yourself the unique selling point. So, and that's what's good about the idea. So it's a specific idea. It could be te- you could you could limit it. You could say top 10 sequels or something like that. But that's obviously limiting it in again. Then you couldn't talk about the bad ones. But you could say 10 episodes or 20 episodes. Oh, yeah, but why even do that then? Why, why not just call it sequels and stop after 10? Well, like now, now, yeah. you're, now you're limiting yourself even more by calling it top 10 sequels. Like. <laughs> you could call, you could, you top could call it you could call it Star Wars sequels. And then it's, <laughs> yeah. then it's only about those top, sequels. Top 10 sequels with a, with a prime number of letters in their name. There are also, here's an even more specific one, prequels. Hmm. So I think prequels could be covered in sequels. Do you think it's similar? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you could have special episodes in your sequel series where you deal with prequels. As long as it's a quill, it's all right. Okay, okay. Well, here's one. It's not a quill, but this is another another tense. And this is a very small genre of film, which is it's not a prequel and it's not a sequel. It's a parallel. Right. So another film that's happening at the same time as this film. Yeah. Now, the only film I could think of that came to mind that references that film, it's quite obviously, is the Back to the Future trilogy. So, one and two. So, two, of no, course, it goes. They're no, sequels. No, no, no. It, well, of course, they're sequels, but they go, but they, they, they have the unique aspect of telling the parts of the film on top of the other film. He goes back and visits the mm. same time in 1955, and he also goes into the future, obviously, and then he, in part three, goes all the way back to the Wild West. But he does... You know what I mean? There is a film happening at the same time as the original film. Can I, you think of another example? I don't know where the timeline is for these new Harry Potter, like these magical creatures or fantastic beasts or whatever they're called. But no. that's kind of happening, isn't it? I mean, Star Wars is going to very soon be going very much that way when they bring out all these individual films about what's Boba Fett been up to and what's Han Solo doing, all these new all these new films. That's going to become a big part of the Star Wars universe. So they're sort of... They branch off... What do you call them? They're... Spin-offs. Spin-offs, by definition, kind of go that way. Mm. Like a TV series spin-off, you know, when when um, someone leaves and has their own sitcom afterwards, like Frasier leaves Cheers. And I guess it's happening at the same time as him going back to the Cheers bar, but they're not referenced in the same way. They're not popping into my head quickly enough, but I'm sure there are films where that has happened, where things have been 
set at the same time, like, you know, in the same universe. What's the worst sequel you've ever seen? Hmm. Worst sequel. I'm not thinking of any stinkers immediately. What you you give me one and I'll have a I'll have a think. The much discussed are the prequels to the Star Wars movie, so we'll leave them aside because yeah. that's taken as a given. Yeah. They're up there. With yeah. yeah, they're yeah, they're they're, they're 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 dreadful. Yeah. I didn't like Die Hard Two. No. But I did like the third one. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I agree with that in heart. Because mm. Die Hard One is fantastic. Yeah, of course. Um the second one, yeah, the plane and it doesn't do it. All it does have Sipowitz. From NYPD Blue, Andy Sipowitz okay. is the cop, right. which redeems it. Did you like the Blade Runner sequel recently? I've never seen Blade Runner. Right. So I you're... know I should have because it's heralded as a great film and it has Harrison Ford. Everything says I should look at it, mm. but I haven't seen it. Okay. So obviously you didn't go and see the sequel then. It's a great sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. No, I haven't. Which do you like better out of The Godfather and The Godfather 2? I go back and forward and I think about this regularly. Mm, mm. <laughs> like I literally... Just will ponder it when I'm waiting somewhere and I'll try and have a yeah. definitive answer. Yeah. It's really hard. Your kids are like, take me to the hospital. You're like, no, I need to stop and think about The Godfather for 20 minutes. <laughs> I do. I watch The Godfather. I watch the first two kind of every January, right, on holidays. I, I probably, just watch them every year. I probably watch them three times a year. And I watch the first one and I think, oh, this is really the best. Then you watch the second one. The only reason I would say I think the first one is the best is that every now and then I get a little bit bored in the second one when they're doing the early the flashback the Robert De Niro scenes they're doing the early life of Vito Corleone mm. and it's it's not that I don't enjoy it or think it's poorly made I just go um, you know Dra- what I mean drags a bit the pacing is a bit slow yeah I'm looking forward to getting back with Al Pacino and the casinos and mm. all that stuff mm. gosh it's such a great it's a it's a Great. It's even some ways a better film because it's got that double narrative mm. going on. Mm. What about you? I would probably just lean towards the first one because there's a l- few minor flaws in the second one. Yeah. What flaws? Like that pacing and like yeah, they, they drag a, f- a few bits here and there. Yeah. Uh, but they're both they're both they're both superb. I also don't think the third one's terrible. I think the third Godfather film is a good solid film. But it doesn't feel as legendary. But I do. I always mm. watch it. I have to say, last year I didn't finish watching it. Yeah. So it doesn't grab me in the same way. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a whole podcast just to talk about the Godfather. In fact, that's a podcast idea. People would talk about the Godfather, and I'd listen to people talking about the Godfather. I went. That must exist. There must be. There must be one called the Podfather and all that sort of stuff. It might be. Ricky Gervais used that. Too. So maybe it's been maybe it's been used. I went through a whole series where I watched lots of documentaries and read the book, and then read lots of other books about it. I haven't read. I haven't read. I've only ever watched the films. Mm. It is fascinating. Is there a film you would like them to make a sequel to that they haven't? There are films that I wish there was more of that film. So like planes, trains, and automobiles, right? Right. It's just because it, I was <laughs> following on from The Godfather, <laughs> <laughs> another classic movie. Yeah. It's like I don't want it to stop. So there are films that I don't, I don't, if I didn't, if they made a sequel of it, it would end up being another story and maybe another, oh, obviously another actor now. John Candy's not with us anymore. Mm. But I don't really want a second one because it'll, the second, the sequels often try and have an overly complex plot. Like they have some major, I don't know, like a band of jewel thieves get involved and suddenly there's a big disaster and it's like, hang on, no, no, I just want to see them hanging out and arguing all the time. And so I want that film to go twice as long, right. but I don't necessarily want a sequel. Yeah, so, you know, it's an enjoyable place to be and you just want it to keep going. There are interesting films where you don't want a sequel, but there are films that leave you with a really strong desire to know what happened to the protagonists next. Oh, yeah, like what? Castaway? Oh, yeah. Like at the end of Castaway yeah. when Tom Hanks is at the crossroads, which I know is the whole point, and it's like, well, what what does he do next? But, like, because I love him so much, because it's Tom Hanks, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, what happened? What happened to him? Did he did he find that new lady, and what was his life like afterwards? And I know I'm not supposed to know, and I know if I know, it would be ruined. Yeah. So so I accept that I can't know, but there are a few... Occasionally you watch a film where they deliberately leave you not knowing what happened next in those people's lives, and I'm like, damn, I wish I knew. Mm. I hope it worked out. It's like when you watch the end of The West Wing. It's like, oh, what was that next presidency like? <laughs> like and what happened yeah, to Butler? Yeah. And what did they all do? Like, you, you get so invested in characters mm. that if they don't give you closure, you feel like this real aching that that really sticks with you to know mm. what happened to those people there's a little tantalizing moment at the end of patriot games where it's got nothing to do with well it does have something to do with a plot where his wife is expecting a baby 
And then but remember that he turns and says, "Is it a boy? Is, is it, it a boy, boy or a girl?" Again? And then it goes to credits. <laughs> that I don't like the end of that film for that reason. Like that's too cynical a cliffhanger because there you're cliffhanging me on something I don't even care yeah, about. I know. I know. It's, <laughs> why do I remember it and wonder when it doesn't matter? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like she answers the phone and goes, "Oh, they, they, who was that on the phone?" And she goes, "It was." And then they cut it off, and it's like, "Oh, it was probably just the guy delivering the shopping." Was. <laughs> It's like, I don't care about that after all that. So speaking of sequels, did you what did you think of the, the sequel or series two of Stranger Things? Because that's another thing you could do with sequels, by the way, like TV series that have sequels. But what did you think of series two compared to series one? I have not seen Stranger Things. Oh, I, I, <laughs> you're dead to me. <laughs> you can get it here, you just haven't got around to it. I haven't watched it. Yeah, I haven't watched it. Okay. But people are raving about, I, I hear enough, conversation with people to say that series two is amazing even better than the first i cannot believe that someone who like is obsessed with pop culture and especially like 80s you know the 80s and stuff like that and has a real like affectionate for all that nostalgia has not watched that yet you uh, that is a that is a glaring glaring gap in your uh, in your viewing that needs to be remedied soon i hear it's quite scary is it scary you'll be right you'll be right it's That's not. not the reason I've not seen it, but I've no. just heard it's not. It doesn't endear me to it, but no. I should watch it. People oh, say it's really retro. It. Like Goonies. It's like Goonies, is that right? You'll love it. You'll love it. Ah. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you think of it then? People listening will have watched it. Uh, the first series was excellent, and then they. I thought they were going to drop the ball on the second series, and they didn't. Because that's what your theories were sequels, isn't it? They'll ruin the memory of the first thing, but they didn't. I think they, I think they did a really good job second time around. Yeah. What do you think about them not making sequels of things like like do you admire the courage of not making sequels like the f- the beloved films or are you kind of like no nah, let's have a crack at it or are you like precious about things and like no don't make a sequel and ruin my precious memory which is what I'm like I do like the idea of the standalone if it's a really great piece of art however the godfather defies that it's like wow you okay okay that you've done that better and obviously star wars is an argument the other way going this was annoying i wish this didn't exist i would wish i had those you know, original three movies, although they've redeemed it a little bit lately. There's got to be an artistic reason to take it to another level. If it's just a money reason, you can kind of tell. It yeah. just says, you know, part two and away we go. I wish I wish there were many more Indiana Jones films. Really? Yeah. I, I, would, I love Indiana Jones films and I wish there were many more. I wish there were five, six, seven, eight. But the fourth one I hope you consider to be an abomination. Yes, no, that was rubbish. Yeah. But I still, but- it's like, no... Idiot, get J.J. Abrams in here and do this properly. And I want, to, I want to have more. I would love to see lots more adventures of Indiana Jones. It's interesting. But they have all those TV shows, don't they? Like the Indiana Jones Chronicles and stuff. But. Yeah, I went looking. When he's young, mm. I went looking for them one day to mm. show the kids. And um, yeah, but I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. find them. They're lost. All right. Like the Ark. <laughs> there they've been. All the, all, the, all the VHS have been put in some box in a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Sequels. All right. Will there be a sequel to the Unmade podcast? Podcasts, by definition, are sequels, aren't they? They're a series. Hmm. So a TV show is not really a sequel. I don't think. I don't think podcasts can have sequels. I mean, the obvious sequel would be like a whole series where you you make there are made podcasts, but 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 that could be it. Could be like that too. It could be like, oh, I loved I loved those ideas on the Unmade podcast, but then they went and made them and ruined it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's right. It, it, like I think a lot of these ideas are better in are better as ideas, yeah, than as being like brought to fruition. But I still, we we will still fruit some of them to sate people's desire to hear what they like, like because the plan is pretty soon to make one, one or two. I'm looking forward to it of our ideas. So let's invent a language. <laughs> Where do we start? That's huge. <laughs> Quick shout out for our Patreon, patreon.com slash unmadefm if you want to support the podcast. And what we do sometimes is we talk about people who already support us on Patreon, such as Shelby, who, oh, you're not going to believe where Shelby's from. Canada. Canada again. Wow. <laughs> Shelby, the Canadians are really good at emailing and taking part in this. Shelby is a woman from Toronto, another university student doing a media studies program, does a lot of design, graphic and web, social media in her final year, so getting ready to sort out her life. She's a bit of an adrenaline junkie. She likes all your, you know, your 
jumping out of planes and wearing helmets and GoPros on you. She sent a bunch of pictures so we can even see what she looks like here. And she's up to all sorts of adventurous stuff. Oh, wow. Being an adrenaline junkie who likes sort of black water rafting and white... What's black water rafting? Is that when you go in a cave? I have no idea. I think black water rafting must be underground or something and zorbing. So, of course, she's been to New Zealand like all adrenaline junkies. Is her idea in line with her hobbies? No. Uh, her idea for a podcast that she actually thinks she might make at some point, I've heard that story before, is called Origins Of, where you pick a really mundane item or topic each episode and then talk about how it came to be and any interesting stories surrounding its origin. You could also tie in discussions about the etymology of the word. Ah. That would appeal to you, that one, wouldn't it? Yeah, I like that sort of stuff. Yeah. Is she talking about household objects, like where forks come from or... I don't know. You, there's her email. You can read it as well as me. She doesn't, she doesn't go into that detail. She just says the origins of stuff. Well, she says a mundane item or topic. Topic. Let's stay with items. So, mm. you know, like, well, forks, cars, chairs. How long have chairs been designed I don't know. like a chair? <laughs> Who invented the chair? It was, so, it was Sir Alfred Chair. Oh, really? Yeah, he was, he was an Englishman in the 1870s. Yeah. Before then, we just stood up all the time. <laughs> this guy called Alfred Chair came along and said, I've got this great idea. <laughs> Instead of standing up all the time, we're going to sit down. Wow. Yeah. People are like... What do you mean by sit? Could we have more information? Please? Oh, he got really rich from it. He still gets... Are his, you telling a true story? He, yeah, yeah. His fa- I thought you were having a laugh. No, no. His family gets two pounds, or about $2.50 for every chair that gets made. That's... <laughs> <laughs> this is like Lord Gerald Sandwich, who was the first person to No, there put... was the Earl... I know. I Earl know. of Sandwich. Yeah. Earl of Sandwich, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. This, shows, this shows why we shouldn't record these things together, Tim, because I just put on my serious face and you believe me. <laughs> That is so absurd. And then you were so insistent. Anyway, the, right. so the history of, yeah, mundane objects. So yeah. that is interesting. I think people find that interesting no matter who they are. Yeah. And you can explain it. You'd have to explain it well in the history without... No, I don't think you'd have to explain it well. Oh, of just... course you'd have to explain it well. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, obviously, because there are no images. I, like, I want to see what the early version of something looks like. But I guess you can just oh, explain it. Oh, yeah. Them. You're thinking this is more of a visual thing, Potentially. Potentially. I don't know. I think it would. I think it's a good. I think it's like a. It's what we call a banker. We love our banker ideas, don't we? And I think that's a banker. That podcast couldn't go wrong. No, that's interesting. Yeah, but Shelby's going to make it, so she probably shouldn't have told us about it. Like she's kind of blown it now. I like the name Shelby. Do you? Mm. I, I've never met anyone called Shelby. Um, no, I don't think I have either. Mm. The. Do you ever wonder if there's a word that you like? That you've never said out loud? Like, not even a word you like. Do you ever wonder if there's a word that you know, like you know the meaning of it or you're familiar with it, very familiar with it, but you've never spoken it? I do know that I had an experience where I knew a word and had read it many times. And when I said it out loud, I pronounced it incorrectly. Right. So for years and years, the word fiancé, I read it in books i knew what fiance was hmm. but when i came to say it out loud i realized in my head all that time i'd been saying fiancy fiancy and so i suddenly said it out loud oh that's that person's fiancy all oh, right and as i was saying it, i knew that's not how that's supposed to sound i'm not surprised you hadn't said it before i'm surprised you hadn't heard it before like on... i think i think i almost had heard it but it was no. like a whole different category okay. so when i heard it i didn't visualize it being spelt that way it was like a word in its own category so it wasn't as you pr- were proposing you weren't like on one knee <laughs> saying to your wife to be will you please be my fiancy will you be my fiancy she's like <laughs> don't have any money on me at the moment <laughs> Little did but she I, know she would become your fiancé over the years. But it was... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, once I said it, it was like, no, that's wrong. And mm. then it was pointed out to me. That's, and I, I know that. It's like, oh, yes, I put two and two together. Okay. What about you? Do you have a word that you... Well, I don't know. If I knew her, I would, I would say it now. And I would like... I wonder if... the Because the first time you ever say a word, like, it's a big deal, isn't it? I'm trying to think. What's a word that I know that I've never said? I don't know. If I knew, I'd say it. I don't know. There are new words you learn. You go, how do I 
pronounce this? Hmm. How do I say this? You know, hmm. like like when I was young, when I was young, I'd never said CD player before, but that's because CD players didn't exist. <laughs> that's right, emoji. That's a word I know I've only said in the last five years. I remember being in primary school and we were playing that like twenty questions guessing game where someone thinks of something. I'm thinking of something. Guess what it is? You know. And my year five teacher at school said, "I'm thinking of something," and all the students had to guess what it was. And we were like, "Is it made of this? Is it cold? Is it hot? Is it big? Is it expensive?" And he was like, "Yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes." And in the end, none of the n- we didn't get what it was. And then the teacher said, "All right, I'll tell you what I was thinking of. It was a CD player, and I didn't know what a CD player was." Wow. And I was like, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like, I, I would never have guessed that because it's this thing I haven't heard of. I haven't heard of it. Yeah. 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 So. I remember being at school and you announcing to the class, we have a CD player. You were moving house and you suddenly realised in amongst the things you had was a CD player and you were like celebrating it. And I remember thinking with envy, oh man, I wish we had a CD player. Sorry, man. No, I know. Have you got one now? I, I, I did manage to get my hands you got, on one. You got one? Yeah. <laughs> managed to. Yeah. yeah. And all those CDs are in boxes uh, in the shed. Yeah. Yeah. That technology didn't actually last very long at all anyway thank you shelby for being a patreon patron of the unmade podcast we have spoken about your idea and then ended up reminiscing about cd players i don't know how that happened but we appreciate everyone who supports the podcast you can do likewise at patreon.com slash unmade fm and in due course i may get in touch with you and say have you got an idea that you would like us to talk about on the show and we may talk about it I wonder with the name Shelby, you know in Australia how we shorten everyone's name to an abbreviation? Yeah. Shelby, would it be abbreviated to Shell? Do people call her Shell? Because in Australia, we call people called Michelle, is often called Shell or Shelly. Would Shelby be a Shell? Shelby. Shelbs. The Shelbmeister. Yeah, Shelbster. (laughs) Shelbster. Thanks, Shelbster, for (laughs) supporting the... I think think we've just lost her as a patron too now. (laughs) I do like the name. I just wonder if it would be shortened. That is a uniquely Australian thing to but do. But we would want to shorten it more than that. We'd just eventually just shorten it to like, shh. Shh, that's right. Shh. Maybe Shelby is the shortened version of... Shelbatha. Shelbatha? Shelbina. Shelbina. Oh. She's actually called Shelbina. Shabambalator. 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 Where's Shabambalator? <laughs> That's an important note. So maybe hey, Shelby... No, hey, and Shabambalator one day says, look, I appreciate, you know, I think we're close enough now. You can start calling me Shelby. Oh, no, you'll always be Shabambalator you'll to me. Oh, that's great. Anyway, I do love the name Shelby, but it is <laughs> hmm, Shell. We have lots of shells in Australia. Yeah. And Shelby's not fun. just on but, the beaches. But Australians like to put E on the ends of things as well, you know. So Sh- Shelby's already got one inbuilt. Ah, that's so, difficult. So, no, but that's good. Like, she's already, she's she's made for Australia. She would, yeah, probably keep her name. Okay, you can be <laughs> Shelby. 